Okay. Have you ever felt abandoned by God? Or maybe you just feel like God's not listening to you. Or maybe you feel like he's not even answering you. If you feel this way, it's because you've not fully submitted to God's will. Or maybe it's just not the right time. I know I feel this way and I struggle continuously to always submit to God's will. But there are 278 times in the Bible where God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You would think we would get the point after a while. But he's always standing there right where you left him, right by your side, with outstretched arms, waiting for you to come back so he can lead you. Maybe you just need this friendly reminder. I know I do. Or maybe you just need to open up your heart, ears, and mind so you can hear the message that's fixing to come. God made us in his image. We see this clearly in Genesis 1, chapter 26. God specifically said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. This is all from NLT. Um, by chapter 3, we see the fall of mankind and the first act of betrayal to God. But even during the fall, God punished us for our sins. But he never left us. He never abandoned them, even though he had wrath towards us. This is evident in the covenants to be made throughout the whole Old Testament. I never fully understood the extent of this verse until I gained a personal relationship with Jesus. But I want to ask you a question, a question I'm always asking myself. If God made us in his image, why would he ever abandon us? Wouldn't that be like abandoning himself? If you'll turn with me to Psalm 32, verse 8, it has the answer. This is the Lord speaking. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. God knows the path we're supposed to take. And if we stray too far from that path, he intervenes so that we, so that he can put us back on the right path. God will follow us wherever we go. If you turn to Joshua 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and verse 5. The Lord tells Joshua, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on the land I have given to you. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. If God is with us, what can't we stand against? And it doesn't matter the situation. If Satan throws a battle at you, you can always win it with God on your side. In fact, Paul says in Romans 8.31, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can stand against us? One final reference point is from the song, Our God, by Chris Tomlin. I'll read you the lyrics, but I won't sing them for you. <laughs> he says, and if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what, can, what, can, what could stand against? He'll pull you out of anything you get yourself into. If you'll turn with me to Isaiah 49, verses 14 through 16. 
While you're turning, I want you I want to note here that God is being compared to a mother nursing her child. It says, Yet Jerusalem says, The Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. Never. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for a child she has bore? But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem's walls in ruins. Just let that verse sink in for a second. If a mother can never forget her nursing child, God will never ever forget his chosen people. If we seek him wholeheartedly, we will always find him. I know you guys don't know a whole lot on my background, so I'm going to give you a little bit of insight here. I grew up a preacher's son. My dad was ordained when I was about 13 years old. I learned a little here and there about Jesus and what he had done, but I never gained a personal relationship out of it. When I was 18, I met this girl I thought was the one, as most 18-year-olds do. So I decided that I would get married and move out. And I was about a few months after I had, I had married her. Um, I fought a lot with my parents back and forth on they, everything about her reputation, who she was. They thought they knew it all. But after a few months, they turned their backs on me. And they abandoned me for about two years. And I turned to my wife, who at the time helped me turn to drugs and drinking. Spent a lot of time trying to fill a void that could only be filled by one person. And that's God. And I never knew it. I never fully got over my drinking problem as it spilled over into my normal life. But thank God for grandparents, though, because they got me through the darkest times and they never gave up on me like God never gives up on us. After moving back home, my parents welcomed me with open arms, of course. And about a month or two after that is when I started dating Bree. We got married by that October. I knew she was the one, the true one. And once I moved in with her, I was convinced my parents could get behind her for sure. She's a wonderful woman, never did any drugs, didn't have any kind of bad reputation. And the fact that she's smart and beautiful doesn't hurt anything either. So one night she expressed to me just how unattractive drinking was to her. I valued her opinion and loved her so much that I poured a whole bottle of Jack Daniels down the drain. I surely thought that this was someone my parents could get behind, 100%. But they deceived me again after constant fights. I struggled to get them to see our side. But they gave up on me again. And this led to me falling deeper into darker places of depression and feelings of hurt with no understanding why they would do this. But it was about five months ago that I found out on Facebook that my mother had blocked me. I didn't know this until there was a pool party. Uh, Bree told me about a pool party that my mother had invited us to many years ago. She found out because my aunt posted a picture on Facebook of her kid, her child, jumping into the pool. I said, my mom would have better pictures on her profile, right? So I search it up. It's like it never was there. It never appeared. Couldn't find it. So I took Bree's phone, searched on it, found out that she, my mom, had blocked her. So I said, okay, I'll use my mother-in-law's phone. 
Surely she hasn't blocked her. I looked it up, found it clear as day. It was right there in front of me. So there I stood devastated in the middle of the living room. It explained everything and why I hadn't heard from them in so many months. I felt hurt, but I did not feel abandoned because the second time around, I had Jesus. I had him to lean on, to walk with, to talk with, and he comforted me and drew me closer. But thankfully, I had gotten to a point in my life where I could clearly see where he stood. That was right by my side the whole time. Sometimes it's easy to feel alone in life. I'm sure you felt alone in, your, in this world, in your thoughts, maybe even physically. No matter the situation that these feelings have caused, you've never been alone a day in your life. The Lord has always stood right by your side, whether you could feel his presence or not. So the next time you find yourself in a difficult situation, I want to remind you of what Paul said in Philippians 4.13. I, or we, can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But the Lord cannot strengthen you if he's not within you. So shortly after I discovered that I had been blocked, the Lord led Bree to a specific verse in Psalm, in her personal studies, in Psalms 27. After reading the whole psalm all the way through, she knew where the Lord was leading her with it. That night before we went to bed, she grabbed her Bible. She told me to grab mine and sat down next to me on the bed. And she said, I think we should read something tonight. I said, what are we reading? She says, Psalm 27. So after flipping there, I asked, who's going to read this? And she said, with smiling, she said, you. Okay. <laughs> Once I read it, verses 7 through 10, I started to cry. After reading those verses, though, I'd like for you to turn there now and read them with me. It says, Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Once I gathered myself after reading that, I, t I read a footnote in Bree's study Bible that I'm going to share with you. It says, God can take the place in our lives of anyone who has abandoned us, fill the void they left, and heal the hurt they caused. He can direct us to those who may take the role of mother or father for us. His love is sufficient for all our needs. In that moment, I thanked God for my in-laws and my wife because they are the truest family I have ever known. And a sign that the Lord has always hold, held me close and planned ahead for everything I would need so I wouldn't go without. And now all of you have been provided and given and added to my God-given family.
and I love you all. So in closing, I want to read you Matthew 28, 20. I'm sure by now everyone knows these verses. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So even though God commanded us to go out to all the nations, he still promised one thing, that he would never leave us. And if the Lord said it 278 times, and the Bible is without error, then I believe what the Lord says is all we need to know, that he will never leave us. So the question is once again, has God abandoned you? Because I'm pretty clear on the answer. He never has, and he never will. Thank you.